What's up, people? Kieran here. Thank you um, to everyone that made a response. I'm going to do a quick update on my contest and then get into some new records that I have. Uh, just kind of inspired to make a video because a bunch of people have been making videos recently and just good vibes in the VC. June is here, summer. So, yeah, everyone's feeling good. Uh, Andrew, you showed your little boy. That was awesome. John Ra. Off for the summer. Killing the kids with homework. Um, so, yeah. Contest. I was going to wrap it up in May. I said it just gave a rough date of May. End of May. But a few people, a couple people said they want to make videos still. So, I'll just let it run for a bit. And see if you guys can get it done. If not, no worries. And uh, so then I can pick who I'm going to send out the t-shirt to. I got a couple more designs done recently, actually. Two or three or four, actually. New designs for t-shirts or posters or whatever that are on the way. I ordered some samples, so I'll share that with you guys when I get them. Some cool stuff that I'm excited about. So just to run through who entered in the contest. If you haven't watched one of the videos, their videos, check them out. They're all awesome. Um, I made a, if you go on my channel, there's a playlist, 150 subscribers contest. And if I don't list you here, let me know because uh, I may have missed your video, although I don't think so. So we got Audiophile Laws, Armian did a blue, his Blue Note collection. That was great. Thank you. Love Blue Note. Andy Glover, you did Enya. Thank you. James Buttery, that was Tribe. That was amazing. Love the that. I don't have any tribe records, although I have heard about them. Tom FXP, you did a video right away. That was amazing. You did Black Jazz. Again, don't have any Black Jazz records, but I love the label. Uh, Paul Baraka P Dub, you did Blue Note again, represented that well. Tough label to, to cover. There's so many amazing titles. And uh, Horhen S, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, you did Verve, classic jazz label. Andrew dropped some knowledge on Muse, definitely added some records to my want list. Uh, and Chris, 4127 Basket, thank you, Indian Navigation. I only have, I think, one record on Indian Navigation, and a Chico Freeman, and it blows, blew my mind away. So I'm looking, always on the lookout for more of those. So what else? So yeah, if you still want to make a video, please do. Would love to see any response uh, what else I have to share okay so first of all yeah I'll share this with you guys I went to when I was in Toronto in March I picked up a print I went to the uh, Basquiat exhibit Jean-Michel Basquiat and I picked up this print because one I wanted a memory of being there and uh, I actually went to the exhibit twice because I was in Toronto I went once with my girlfriend and then when I was back in a few weeks later I went again with my cousin but so I got I just recently got this frame so I haven't put it up yet it's gonna go in this room which is slowly turning into my record room my records were uh, in the living room before but so this I thought it was appropriate to share so it's kind of inspired by a record the actual piece of art is a piece of wood huge huge piece of wood so I guess meant to be a record and so it says now's the time which I found inspirational just get shit done do it now and uh, it says Parker, so he was uh, inspired a lot by jazz, Basquiat, and uh, jazz artists uh, come up a lot in his work, so this would be Charlie Parker. And now's the time, they had a, a long part, it's from uh, Martin Luther King, um, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. So, I thought this was cool, I thought it would be a nice little thing to put in my record room. So, there we go. Thought I'd share that with you guys. Okay, so went to some new records. I got three records from the record store, and on last weekend was the my favorite record store. It had a vinyl warehouse sale, which I'd been really looking forward to. Everything was a dollar, and I wouldn't say I was disappointed because I didn't have expectations to find amazing stuff because I know what you get for a dollar usually. I picked up 20 records. I went with my buddy who's just starting his record collection. He picked up, I think, 23. I picked out some stuff for him, some stuff I had already that I thought he would like. And it was, I mean, it was just crazy. 
So they were letting 250 people in. It was opened at 10 the first day and I showed up at like 10, 15 and there was like hundreds of people waiting to get in. So, I mean, I didn't wait too long. I think it was like half an hour or something I was in there, but oh, I'm assuming all the best stuff was gone right away. And they were gonna add more. It was three day sale, they were gonna add more. Apparently like 10,000 records every day or throughout the day. But I didn't go back, I was, just, I mean, I probably could have found some more stuff, but it's going to take me, you know, I just, I wasn't inspired to go back. Uh, I had other stuff to do. So I'll run through that. First, I'll show you what I, I had to go back to pick up something I had ordered from that actual store uh, that same weekend, last weekend. So I found a couple things. One, this is what we're listening to, which is I most, was most excited about in my finds is, this was cheap. This was five, six bucks. Canadian, so Gatto Barbieri, how do you say it? Um, it doesn't even say his name on it, it just says Gatto. Anyway, Gatto Barbieri um, on Flying Dutchman. There's some awesome artwork here, and this is from 1970, I think it was recorded in 69. So, Flying Dutchman, great shape and really cheap. I don't have many Flying Dutchman records. I have the Leon Thomas album. I would love to pick up the um, Gil Scott Heron ones. Anyway, so, and this is awesome. This is what's playing right now. Very, very, it's kind of, it's a mix of Latin, Latin jazz with some more freer moments and definitely a spiritual feel to it. So this was a record, I'm, I'm familiar with the artist, I know James were playing one of his uh, records recently, I think it was chapter 2 or something you said, I can't remember, I've seen a bunch around. And so I knew about him, I had hesitated on picking up his albums in the past, just because I see them and you know, one day I'll get them, but anyway. This one I had never seen, you can hear it right now, it gets heavy, it wasn't even on my radar. And so this is, of course, produced by Bob Thiel, who, uh, this is Flying Dutchman, the label he started, you guys know, after leaving Impulse, so the, the gatefold and stuff, very similar to the Impulse, very nice, thick, laminated gatefold, even the spine looks the same. So this is the first song. You see this? Grab it. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to give you guys a little feel of what that was like. So, next one I found is, well, the only other one I found at the store is this. Something I knew nothing about. What inspired me to pick it up was, um, so it's a reissue by whatsmusic.com, and I had already picked up, actually I have one right here, this one. Open Sky Unit on the same reissue label, I guess, which is incredible. And I picked up another jazz, a uh, rare, like, Finnish jazz, I think it was, which was really cool, too. So I picked up this, which is, because it was 50% off, I was like, what the hell, it's a Brazilian record. So, Bam, Bamboo? Yeah, Bamboo by Marcus Ariel. So I don't know much about Brazilian. It's, I'm still getting into it. Just a whole world that I need to discover. And this, I'm not blown away, I wasn't blown away by this like I was the other ones. Not to say it's not good, just maybe not my taste as much. I'll give you guys a little needle drop. Just different. It's from 1981. So it says, Bamboo is a classic Samba fusion date, showcasing Ariel on Fender Rhodes and acoustic piano supported by world class players. So it's not bad, and I'll probably appreciate more as I listen to it. It just didn't knock my socks off right away. Um, like the other ones. Oh shit. So, 
what I forgot to mention about this, or I'm really bad at this sometimes, is uh, who was on it. You had um, Ghetto plays tenor sax, flute, and vocal on here, and you have Charlie Hayden on bass, which is always a good sign. Bieber Harris on drums, don't know him. Richard Landrum on percussion, don't know him. And you have Rosewell Rudd on trombone, who recorded for Impulse, I know. And Lonnie Smith, my Liston Smith Jr. on piano. So a pretty good lineup on the third world. So this is the what we're listening to is the Marcus Ariel. So it's good vibe. For seven bucks. A record I'll never find in person, an original. Percussion there. Some slower songs. This. A little bit sounds a bit cheesy. And if you know this record, let me know what you think. So that is that. And the one that I had ordered, asked them to bring in a copy, is another Numero Group album in the same series. It's the Numero Fawn series. And this is Songs of the BOS label. So I'll give you a couple neat little drops on this. King Bullard version, Songs of the BOS label. So it's from the same series of the Shirley Ann Lee, which I showed and picked up, which is incredible. I know not everyone loves gospel, but I do. So there's some funky stuff on here. Heavy drums. This is Trumplet. My life will be sweeter. quickly run through, I'm over my 13 minutes, I'll run through quickly what I picked up. Some of it is pretty trash, but they were a dollar like I said, so everything from this vinyl warehouse sale, one dollar. Nothing's in amazing condition, but honestly for a dollar everything plays fine. Obviously I picked out a, a huge stack and went through them and some of them were mashed up so I didn't, uh, didn't keep them. So I got picked up this. Another Isley Brothers record that didn't have, Go For Your Guns. And this has, oh, I have to play this actually. I was just gonna let this gospel album run out. And I'm not, this is the only one I'm gonna needle drop. So I haven't listened to a lot of these records, but this one is an Isley Brothers record I didn't know. And right off the bat, there was a sample that I recognized that has been sampled by a million people, but I actually rec recognized it from um, a remix of a Chaos song, who's a Canadian rapper. I don't even know which song it was. This is amazing. You want to check out the Chaos song? It's Heaven Only Knows Remix. Okay, so quickly through the $1 records. Johnny Winter, nothing but the blues. Happy about this, actually. Ooh, some smooth singing. This has uh, Muddy Waters on vocals and James Cotton on it, uh, James Cotton on harp, so this is dope. 
some blues. No, not everyone's into the blues, but I dig it. It's probably the most valuable record, and it's mashed up. It looks scratched to hell, but nothing deep in it plays perfectly. It's like barely even scratchy, and I don't mind a little scratch scratchiness on my blues records. And this is Champion Jack Dupree and uh, featuring Mickey Baker. This is, what's it called? Heavy Blues or something? Jack and Mickey and Heavy Blues. And I love this cover. When I saw how mashed up it was, I was like, whatever, for a dollar, I'm just gonna get it even just for the cover, because I love it so much. But it's an awesome album and it plays great, so take it. One dollar. Something, Anita Baker, Rapture. Something I see a million times. Don't really know, it's not really my favorite, but um, I'm gonna, oh, I think it's something I should know for a dollar. Picked up Aretha Franklin, some more gospel, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So this is a double LP, gatefold on Arista from late 80s, but I thought it was worth checking out since I appreciate gospel music and she is a great gospel singer. Ron Carter on Milestone, couldn't pass that up for a dollar, I was happy to find this, a song for you. Uh, who else plays on here? Jack DeJanet on drums, Ralph McDonald uh, on percussion. I don't know the other players, but anyway, I dig some Milestone records. This one's from 78, I think, yeah. I didn't have this, Sting, The Dream of the Blue Turtles, so classic 80s album that I've listened to a bunch with some friends and like some of the songs for a dollar, why not? Barabas, Spanish, kind of soul, rocky, funk, R&B, I don't know, a bunch of different kind of blend of genres here. Um, this is their, I don't know if it's their third album, it's from 74, I have their first one. I listened to this through, this was, there's some good moments on here and some stuff I don't really love. This is some slower R&B, I think, from Philadelphia, which I see, and I don't, I've listened to it before and not loved it, but for a dollar, I figured I'd give it more of a chance. MFSB, Love is the Message. It's probably Gamble and Huff. Yeah, it is. Produced by Gamble and Huff. So, kind of early 73 Philadelphia soul. Got to increase my knowledge of that. This, something I didn't have. Pass it up all the time, but for a dollar, Figured I'd get to know it, something never really listened to. Sade. Picked up a Mongo Santa Maria record for a dollar. Mongo Mania. I mean, none of these are in the covers you can see are beat up, but that's why they're a dollar. Um, another soul name that I know, but I don't really know the music, so it's kind of going to allow me to discover some stuff that I should know. Archie Bell and the Drells. This was from 75 and this is also a uh, gamble and kind of gamble and Leon Huff so probably from Philadelphia as well let's say here Houston Texas born so yeah these people are from Texas but this one is probably the least exciting when I dropped it it's a soundtrack looking for Mr. Goodbar so there's a bunch of crap on here Donna Summer songs but I saw that there was a couple of Bill, couple of Bill Weathers songs, OJ's, Diana Ross, Thelma Houston, Commodore's, Marlena Shaw. Um, so whatever, I just grabbed it here, but it didn't sound too exciting. But I just listened to it quickly. Oh. Another soundtrack, Diana Ross, theme from Mahogany. Some all right stuff on here, some not as much. I just need to drop it quickly. I have to listen to these, so. I'll give you guys more in a, you know, in a recent spins video as I go through them. I'll let you know what I really like. I picked up a 12 inch just for the fun of it. Grandmaster, Grandmaster Flash and Mally Mel, White Lines. Sugar Hill, on the Sugar Hill label. Why not? Mahavishnu Orchestra. I have one of their albums. Should have more. Apocalypse. This is with uh, London Symph Symphony Orchestra, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with the London Symphony Orchestra, yeah. So I haven't listened to that yet, and I also got another one, Birds of Fire. 
approaching 20 minutes here. Sorry, guys. Almost done. Picked up this, something I've seen but don't know at all. Oregon. Oregon, sorry. Why? I don't know why I say that. Oregon. Uh, out of the woods. So this is, I'm... Oh, we got Ralph Towner over here. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm curious to check this out. I think it's gonna blow my head back, but something I should know, be able to talk about. And two David Sanborn records, which I don't, I was very hesitant and probably shouldn't have grabbed them, but sometimes you get some funky beats or something on here, so I just wanted to check through them for a dollar. Uh, as we speak, but most of it's pretty cheesy. As we speak and Backstreet. So that's it. Those are the 20 records I picked up. Nothing amazing, but I'm really happy about that Gato I picked up. And uh, yeah, other than that, I haven't really been digging. I was kind of waiting for that sale and take a little break from buying records. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna do probably just sit back and listen to some records over the next couple weeks. Maybe do a couple recent spin videos, talk about what I've been listening to. So let me know if you do a thread. I'll, if you do a thread response, a contest response, I'll probably see it. But just let me know. Put it, paste it into the um, into the comments of my video. And I hope everyone's well. Enjoy the summer, and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.